Liam Bloom here with It Magazine, and I'm at the home of Ed Begley Jr., and we're gonna go inside and get the tour and learn what it's like to live a life of purpose and passion. Come on, let's go meet Ed. Liam. Ed. Thanks Good for coming. Good to see you. You too, buddy. I'm so excited to hear about this house and see it finally after five years. We've been talking about it for a while. Ah. We finally did it. We got Rochelle's needs met. She wanted a very stylish home and she didn't want to see any of the green features like the solar panels or green gadgets. So I have my very green home and her very stylish French Mediterranean design home. Beautiful. Come on in. Let's, let's look do at it. it. Okay. So what do we have here, Ed? Big thick walls, the most points you get from LEED. And let me tell you what LEED is. Leadership and energy and environmental design. That's a rating system for how energy efficient a house is. The most points you get is from what's called the envelope of the house. Mm -hmm. How well insulated it is, how well it holds the heat in the winter and the cool in the summer. And because we have these big thick walls, you have an incredible thermal mass. Now it's steel. We didn't want to use trees, take down trees to build a house. So we built it out of steel. Now you got a challenge. You don't want that heat or cool going through that steel, which, you know, steel conducts heat or cooling very well. So you don't want that. So the six inches of steel, a two inch thermal gap, then four inches of steel, an incredible isonine foam insulation in between. All the doors and windows are double pane, high efficiency there. And it's a great way to have a very efficient home. Does everybody have to do a wall that thick to get this advantage that you're talking about? No, you don't. You can do good insulation with any thickness of wall. You know, we have the resources to do walls this thick. If you're doing just two by fours or two by six, you don't have to do 12 inches thick. The average show Jane can do that by just putting in good insulation and good double pane windows. You know, they say the sign of any good party is people ending up in the kitchen. That's where everybody congregates, right? And yeah. this is also a very green room. Why? Because these countertops are not some Italian marble, takes a lot of energy and fuel to get it over here. It's quartz, which is more local, it's called Caesar Stone. It's a wonderful stone product countertop. And all the appliances, this is very water efficient. There's a dishwasher right here, believe it or not behind that panel. And that uses very little water, very little electricity. All the faucets are Kohler, very low water usage faucets here in this room. Energy Star rated refrigerator is well over there. But we're saving a lot of water in another room. Can I show you the laundry room? Please, let's Come do it. Come with me. We're in the laundry room with the Dream Machines. What do we have here? We have high Energy Star rated washer and dryer. That means it uses very little electricity, very little natural gas, very little water. And what water it does use mm -hmm. goes right here to this switch. Landscape, landscape and sewer. sewer. Okay, let me tell you what that is. Landscape takes that gray water, which is very easy to clean that gray water with a little mulch pit, goes out to the fruit orchard. Perfect application for gray water. It goes by gravity right out there without any pumps or holding tanks to be a problem. But if you need to use bleach or some other kind of OxyClean or something, uh -huh. you go like this, sewer, and you're not killing your trees by putting bleach on them, you know, going into that gray water system. So it's a perfect system. You have the freedom to use the clean products that I use all the time for laundry soap and everything. And it goes out to the landscape. But if you need to use something else to get a stain out of a shirt, not buy a new shirt, that's a green choice to make rather than buy a whole new shirt. Maybe you want to use a tiny bit of bleach on it. You can do that without hurting the earth. It's a wonderful setup. Cool. We've got other areas in the house that save water. Come with me. What a grand bathroom. And no sacrifice of beauty here for being green. No, Rochelle got her dream bathroom, but it is, as you say, very green in many ways. First of all, the tile is all oceanside glass and tile, high post-consumer recycled content. Bottles from curbside pickup are in all the tiles on the floor and on the walls. Water usage. The shower head and both these faucets use very little water, much less than a normal shower head or fa uh, faucet right there. And of course, we have the act on demand system, which has a motion detector right up there. That motion detector senses when someone's come in the room, it turns on a pump that brings hot water ready to go to that faucet or to that shower head right there. So you don't waste water waiting for it to get warm. And like we have in the laundry room, we have another sewer and landscape switch under the sink. So all this water goes from that tub, from both sinks, and from the shower, down to the gray water system to irrigate the fruit orchard. Amazing. What else is there to talk about? Come in the basement, let's look at some of this equipment. All right. Here we are in the engine room, many people think of. Tell us what is going on. This is incredible. It is like an engine room. This is what keeps the SS Begley moving. <laughs> All this equipment, and it's very efficient equipment. 
right down at the end there, you see that one big tank? That's a solar hot water tank. There's no flame under it. There's no electric element that heats it. It all is coming from a solar thermal panel on the roof that heats it up. So that's number one. Number two, if it's cloudy for a while, you have this highly efficient A.O. Smith 96% thermal efficiency natural gas heater. It uses some natural gas, but comes on rarely because most of it's being done by the sun. So this boosts it if it's cloudy for a while and gets it up to a nice temperature. Come over here and you see the solar electric inverters. That takes the DC power from up on the roof. That's what solar panels are, they're DC power, mm -hmm. and it inverts it into AC that you can use. Five kilowatts, five kilowatts. So we've got 10 kilowatts of inverter power, nine kilowatts of solar panels on the roof. So we got some wiggle room there. And then I've saved the best for last. Highly efficient and a good idea for anybody to get is Lutron equipment. Lutron dimmers are fantastic, very efficient. And you don't have to have a whole array like I have. You can have just one or two or three or four Lutron dimmers in your house. And now these dimmers work with LED lights and LED lights are nice and warm. They're not the cool kind of blue things they were in the past. Yeah. So Rochelle loves these lights. So we've got this Lutron smart lighting controls for the whole house, all dimmable, all LED, and lighting controls in the form of shade. Shades go up and down depending on time of day and time of year. Wow, so you got your own power center, but what does it cost to you now to run this whole operation? I designed this system to have nine kilowatts of solar and hope that would be enough for this very efficient house to run the house in charge of the car. And it was, but I forgot about the pool. Rochelle wanted a pool. There was a pool on site that we couldn't keep. Huge amount of water, weird geometric shape. So I said, if we turn it into a rectangle, we can then cover it. But I forgot about the pool pump and the ozone equipment she wanted. So I do have a bit of a power bill with the pool. Oh, uh oh, how much? It's $36 a month, all in for the 36? car, the house, and all the pool equipment. Plus you're saving on transportation. That's true, it's good in every way. Come with me, let's look That's outside. Cool. So under us, there's a huge tank, 10,000 gallon rainwater tank, looks like a two-man submarine, and all the downspouts lead there, and all the area drains lead there. That gives you a lot of water for irrigation. Over there, at the fruit orchard, there's a bunch of fruit trees. They get water from the gray water system that you saw in the laundry room right. and up in the master bath. That all goes to the gray water system wow. out there, flows by gravity out there. Then, of course, you have all the vegetable gardens, a very green way to eat and have fresh food, is growing your own food. We have compost that we're making here. We have highly efficient heating and air units, these Daikin units that give you heating and cooling very efficiently. And we have all the pumping equipment for the Rainwater, there's pumps in that tank that pump it out. So when you turn on a hose bib with the automatic sprinklers come on, it automatically comes from the rain tank to there. So it's all automated, works very, very well. And this is the control center for all that outdoor equipment. Another green feature in the backyard, this is a recycled plastic fence. And here's why it's green. You're using that curbside material, plastic bottles that they pick up from recycling programs across America and you're making a fence out of it. The other good thing, you never have to paint it again. It's just color all the way through. No termite damage, no water damage. You got a lifetime fence. I don't know how long the house is gonna last, but this fence is gonna last for hundreds of years. Well, this is some pretty advanced technology. Where does someone start with to get going with something like this? Start the way I started. You don't run up Mount Everest to get to base camp and to get acclimated. You do the stuff you can do. I had a a 50 gallon rain barrel that I put under my downspout. That's how I started. I collected rainwater in that way. A lot of bang for the buck. Then I had a 550 gallon tank underground. And now finally I got a 10,000 gallon tank because I have the resources to do that. Do what you can. Get one dimmer. Get one bit of weather stripping. Get an energy saving thermostat. Get some LED bulbs. Do those things that you can afford. And one day, God willing, you do things on a more grand scale like we've done here, but start small and build. You're gonna save a lot of money and have more resources to do extra. You said a great thing, save money. So really, what does it cost to, uh, for you now with all these water technologies? As I said before, my electric bill is about $36 a month. My water bill from the, all the showers and the food that we prepare and everything, that's about $100 a month. So that's not bad Whoa. for showers and cooking and uh, laundry and all of that kind of personal water use. Cause you can't use a rainwater for that. You could have squirrels or birds on your roof, you know, doing what animals do. And you could have a, a mess if you started drinking the rainwater without treating it. So that's it, 136 bucks for water, 
power, electric, and transportation. Yeah, it's not a bad setup. Not bad at all. Most people look at the cost of a house and they go, my house costs me X amount. They're looking at the cost of building it. That's like looking at an iceberg and seeing that little piece that's peaking above the water line. That piece is saying that's the amount of the iceberg. There's a big piece below the water line. That's the cost of running that house mm. over 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 years with a house like this built out of steel. It's going to be around a long time. The cost of running it is the big chunk, and that cost is going to be very low over many years because of the way we built it. We built it smart and built it for long-term prosperity. Gosh, um, you know, this is really exciting, and, and thanks for giving us a nice tour of the day. We just hit on a couple of the key things and I'm sure we could probably maybe go to your website. Go to BegleyLiving.com. We've got a lot of tips there for everybody. So check out some of the stuff. Start small and build. That's the way I did it starting in 1970 when I was a broken, struggling actor. So do something today. Beautiful. Thanks again for the day. Thanks, Liam. Awesome.